It all comes as the Biden-Harris administration spent over a billion dollars from a FEMA program on services for migrants. Attorney General of the great state of Florida, Ashley Moody, joins me now. A.G. Moody, why does the Biden-Harris administration always seem to help American taxpayers last? Well, it definitely seems like the reason is because if your uh, priority is helping illegal migrants, then American people are forced to be last. Morning, Todd. Yeah, it, everyone should be waking up this morning outraged by that comment. Now, I think it's interesting that they're telling us that FEMA has the money, but yet I see this article here uh, that says, Mayorkas warns FEMA lacks funding for hurricane cleanup after agency spent over a billion dollars on migrants. They stole the FEMA money just like they stole it from a bank so they could give it to their illegal immigrants. Guys, I want you guys to watch as this weatherman breaks down crying, talking about Hurricane Milton live on camera, breaks down in tears. It's unbelievable. And to think that Kamala Harris is out here on the campaign trail leveraging this nightmare of news in the form of a natural disaster that Floridians are dealing with right now is, is just unconscionable. But watch as this weatherman literally chokes up and begins to cry as he's talking about Hurricane Milton live on camera. It's just an incredible, incredible, incredible hurricane. Uh, it has dropped It has dropped 50 millibars in 10 hours. Um, I apologize. This is just horrific. Um, winds, maximum sustained winds are 160 miles per hour. And um, it, uh, it is just uh, gaining strength in the Gulf of Mexico, where you can imagine uh, the winds, I mean, the seas are just so incredibly, incredibly hot. A record hot, as you might imagine. You know what's driving that. I don't need to tell you. Global warming, climate change, uh, leading to this and becoming an increasing threat. Have you spoken before President Trump at all? Uh, Are you kidding me? Mr. President Trump, former President Trump, get a life, man. Help these people. Will you hold him accountable? You said you were going to hold this accountable. Public will hold him accountable. You better in a press hold him account because you know the truth. Well, you, do you plan to speak with former President Trump? No. Hang on a second here, guys. So, President Biden, who's currently in office with everyone's favorite, Kamala Harris, is telling Donald Trump that he should be helping the people? Am I missing something here? <laughs> Donald, Donald Trump has not been in office for three and a half years, and it just seems like the left... Democrat, the, 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 the left media, the leftists are just hell bent on <laughs> blaming everything on Donald Trump. And they're even, even the current president of the United States, Joe Biden, is demanding, calling for President Trump or former President Donald Trump to do something about this. This is absolutely absurd. Now, if you think about it, Donald Trump has actually done something about it. He opened up his own hotel and virtually allowed everyone to stay there for free in Donald Trump's hotel who are working to support people who are dealing with uh, with the Hurricane Helene situation, as well as the current Hurricane Milton. So the real question is, is what are you doing? Because we're getting reports left and right that FEMA is broke. FEMA doesn't have the money to help out the victims and the folks over in Florida. And Ron DeSantis is looking at Kamala Harris right now like, why are you reaching out to me all of a sudden? I haven't heard from you for any of the previous hurricanes that they've had to deal with over the last several years. So I think it's pretty clear at this point, Kamala Harris is only interested in being visible when it politically benefits her. I mean, we've not heard from her regarding any other uh, uh, reach out efforts or support related efforts to the people. She doesn't care about the people. And if she does, she certainly didn't make it uh, apparent to us. This is the first. It's, it's hard to make out what he what he just said. We've been listening to President Joe Biden live at the White House, answering questions from reporters and giving an update on the federal response to Hurricane Milton. A, a number of specific lines stood out. 
First, President Biden saying, quote, we will do everything we can to help you pick up the pieces in reference to folks who have lost everything here in the Sunshine State. The president talked about everything the federal government is doing to facilitate uh, the work of helping residents get back on their feet and coordinating with local officials and, and state officials as well. He talked about speaking with Governor Ron DeSantis of the state, the FEMA administrator, uh, as well, Deanne Criswell. Also, President Biden called for Congress to come back as soon as possible, he said, to help allocate funds not only to FEMA but also to the Small Business Administration, though the president said he had not spoken to House Speaker Mike Johnson about that in recent days. He was asked if he spoke to former President Donald Trump, the president there talking extensively about what he sees as disinformation and false claims that have been made by the former president about the federal response, specifically to Hurricane Helene in North Carolina and Georgia and other southeastern states. The president there in response to Trump saying, quote, get a life, man, help these people. Uh, I want to get. So, again, <laughs> why would President Joe Biden be asking or demanding President, former President Donald Trump to be helping these people. A part of me actually feels like Joe Biden had no idea that the mics were still live. Like, why on earth would the sitting president of the United States, Joe Biden, look at Donald Trump and say, hey, get a life, man, help these people? Seriously? Like, absolutely seriously. Now, here's another thing. It also looks like Joe Biden is stabbing Kamala Harris in the back because Joe Biden has been nowhere to be seen for several months, ever since Kamala Harris has been installed as the Democratic nominee over Joe Biden. Joe Biden has pretty much been scarce. Joe Biden's been on vacation. He's been at the beach. He's been in all these other places, but we haven't seen him. But what we did hear is that Ron DeSantis um, has received Joe Biden's cell phone number. In other words, Joe Biden provided Ron DeSantis with a cell phone number. If you need anything, give me a call. This has been made very public. This looks like a deliberate backstab to Kamala Harris from Joe Biden because he's like, look, you know, I know you're trying to be president and all, but I didn't want to not be president. I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to drop out of the election. This is the way I'm looking at it. This is the way I'm pretty sure Joe Biden feels right now. And I'm also, I'm also pretty sure that Jill Biden feels the same way. She did not want to give up the White House, but they were forced out. And so now here you have a crisis. You have a natural disaster in the heart of Florida. And it looks like Joe Biden is making his presence known in spite of Kamala Harris trying to uh, jump out in front of this thing and, and prove her, re her relevance. By the way, if you haven't already, please take a second, hit the like button for the video if you appreciate the content and the updates. Really appreciate you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. And if you want to take it a step further, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to even buy me a coffee, that'd be cool too. There's a link in the description down below if you guys want to do that. Now, what you're about to hear, guys, is a deliberate attack against Donald Trump right now. You're about to hear a deliberate attack against Donald Trump uh, regarding his, as they uh, call it, uh, misinformation with regard to FEMA. I want you guys to listen to Anderson Cooper from CNN speak with the director of FEMA, speak with the FEMA administrator, Deanne Criswell, regarding the position, financial backing, and the readiness of FEMA in this particular catastrophe. Take a listen. For more now on the federal government's response to the storm, I'm joined by FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell. Mr. Criswell, thank you. First of all, where do FEMA's preparations for Hurricane Milton stand tonight? Anderson, we have been preparing uh, for Hurricane Milton uh, for several days now. You know, we've got thousands of people uh, in the state of Florida supporting the response and the recovery from Helene, but also from some previous storms. I mean, this is the third year in a row that the west coast of Florida has gotten hit. Uh, but we've moved additional resources in. We've moved in search and rescue teams from our teams, from the Coast Guard, CBP, the Department of Defense. We've moved in commodities, healthcare assessment teams, all the same resources that we moved in ahead of Helene so they can be ready to respond as soon as the storm has passed and as soon as they have needs. How stretched are, is the federal response at this point? I mean, obviously there's a lot of folks in North Carolina in need uh, and elsewhere still from, from Helene. 
Uh, Anderson, we plan for multiple events just like this, um, but this is going to be a challenge, right? These are two very large events back to back, but we have a layered approach to our staffing, um, and we have done this before. We have responded to Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Maria in 2017, and even in 2020, while we had every state declared for COVID-19, we also had major hurricanes and wildfires, and so we've done this before. We plan for this, and we we have strategies to make sure that we're using all available resources within FEMA, but we're just part of the team, the rest of the federal government as well. Uh, I know you're not focused on politics. Obviously, you got a lot to do, but it's I got to ask you, I mean, the former president continues to say things about the federal response, FEMA's response that about the Helene uh, that do not seem to be true. I mean, among other things, he's claiming that funding was diverted to care for illegal immigrants, that there's no money left. It, yeah. What do you say to that? And what's what what that kind of information out there that he's spreading? What does that do to the like the morale of people working on disaster relief? Hey Anderson, I've been talking about this for a few days now, and it's clearly that I've said that this is false. That the the information and the lies that are being spread are just simply untrue, and it's a distraction. Um, and I'm not going to let it impact our ability to continue to respond. And my focus right now and our team's focus right now is on a Category 5 hurricane headed towards Florida. That's where we're going to continue to push our efforts and make sure that we're meeting the needs of those that get impacted. I want to get now to my colleague, Dana Bash. Uh, Dana, I understand that you got Vice President Harris on the phone. That's right, Brianna. Thank you so much. Uh, Vice President Harris, uh, I believe that you are now on the telephone fresh off of that briefing that we all saw here on CNN. Thank you so much for, for being here. There are dedicated folks on the ground from FEMA, from federal, state, and local agencies that are there to help you, to help you in terms of advice now, to help you get out, and to help with recovery and rebuilding after this um, storm and this hurricane passes. And, and Madam Vice President, I just want to follow up on the FEMA readiness part of this discussion. We heard the... This is where Dana Bash, CNN, drops the worst news for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz's campaign. Take a listen. Uh, Administrator Deanne Criswell say earlier today that the agency is down to $11 billion in disaster relief funding because it spent about $9 billion just over the last week. Are you confident FEMA has the resources to manage what we are, never mind what we're about to see in Florida, but of course, that's on top of Hurricane Helene two weeks ago. FEMA absolutely has the resources that it needs now and to deal with this hurricane as it hits and the aftermath. Well, guys, Kamala Harris and the Biden administration, I guess, as well as the Tim Waltz administration, has just received some devastating news regarding FEMA, regarding Florida, and this entire political stunt surrounding this whole natural disaster and Hurricane Milton. Take a listen. Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas sounding the alarm on FEMA funding right after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Listen. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds, FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. This all comes as the Biden-Harris administration. Oh my God, Alejandro Mayorkas. This is, this is who Biden has appointed here, guys, has admitted that FEMA doesn't have the money. They don't have the funds. So the question is, why are they attacking Donald Trump? When Donald Trump merely reiterated what Alejandro Mayorkas has uh, made aware to the American people here. I remember reading about this huge wealth transfer that was happening, but I never imagined how real it would be until I started seeing people I knew actually getting ahead. Meanwhile, I was feeling left behind. And it wasn't luck. They were positioned with the right people and resources at the right time. The Life Pursuit Network gives you the exact same advantage. For less than a dollar a day, you can learn the strategies that others are using to seize this massive opportunity. Don't stand on the sidelines while others succeed without you join us right now and be a part of this great wealth transfer that's already changing lives don't believe that because con congress is not in washington right now you don't believe that they need to come back earlier in order normal 
but you don't. Nice, nice. So Dana Bash is actually calling out the fact that Congress is not in session. And I mean, I'm kind of surprised to see CNN. I mean, this is this is this is a this is a, a left leaning news station actually asking a little bit of a tough question here because Congress is not in session. They're not in Washington. So now what? Don't believe that because con Congress is not in Washington right now. You don't believe that they need to come back earlier in order to give FEMA more resources. FEMA has what they need right now. OK, I want to talk a little bit more about what both. Don't ask me any more questions like that. That's that's the response. I got. <laughs> that's how I took it. You and President Biden talked about in this briefing, and each of you has talked about uh, many times over the past few days, which is this dangerous misinformation that is coming from a lot of corners, including your opponent in the race for uh, the White House. Uh, several local Republican leaders have been pleading with them to stop. Have you spoken to GOP officials in Florida to figure out how to help combat that right now as it's about to get a whole lot worse? Well, I'll tell you, I have spoken with local officials who have been struck, for example, by Hurricane Helene, and they um, are doing a, 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 an extraordinary job in trying to combat the misinformation. And I'm talking about sheriffs, I'm talking about mayors, I'm talking about local officials. I don't even know their party affiliation, by the way but leaders on the ground who know that it is not in the best interest of the people living in those areas to not know their rights, not to know what they're entitled to, and to be afraid of seeking help. It is dangerous. It is, it is unconscionable, frankly, that anyone who would consider themselves a leader would mislead desperate people to the point that those desperate people would not receive the aid to which they are entitled. And that's... I personally have not seen any misinformation being spread from Donald Trump on the issue of um, of Hurricane Helene. So it, it, it's and I think it's so funny because these these news stations, Kamala Harris, they will label anything that they disagree with misinformation. And that is misleading. Not only is that misleading, that in and of itself can miss can label relevant accurate information as misinformation and now you're basically uh misguiding people who would otherwise be able to benefit from this from from this information so i mean it, it, it's horrible what they're doing here i literally just got back from las vegas and i want you guys to listen to this this is coming from news 3 las vegas take a listen can't time this with live television, but we have pictures right now of President Biden at Joint Base Andrews getting ready to board Air Force One, go down to Florida, and here you can see the live pictures on your screen. It's the magic of television. Try getting that on your phone. And he's going to Florida to survey all of the damage from Helene. And get this, there was a warning this morning from federal officials that our nation's emergency fund is running low on cash, and we have hurricane season all the way through next month. As the president walks up the steps to Air Force One, let's check in live with our national correspondent, Matt Galka. Matt, the timing perfect there as far as what we're talking about right now. But this is troubling as an American. Here I am in Las Vegas, not in harm's way from a hurricane, but at the same time, how can it be running low on cash? Wow. So here we have a news station reporting that FEMA is, in fact, low on cash. So which is it? Who is providing the misinformation? I want you guys to let me know in the comments, guys. Yeah, it's certainly not the news you want to hear, especially if you're living in the southeast right now in one of those hard-hit states. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, better known as FEMA, they, this is the good news. They say they have enough money in the short term, but not enough for the rest of hurricane season. That's the message from Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas this week. FEMA is still tallying up the total damage from Helene as they're delivering food, water, and other supplies to those hardest-hit states in the southeast. Now, more than 150,000 households have already applied for disaster relief, but that's likely on the low end. That number is probably going to go up and go up soon. FEMA has around $20 billion to work with for the remainder of the year, and Congress gave the agency the flexibility to spend it more quickly when they passed the short-term funding bill that lasts through December. They did so here's what we have to understand. We have to understand that there's still like hundreds, if not 
uh, not, not hundreds of hundreds, hundreds of thousands, if not potentially millions of people who don't even have internet access. Now, thanks to Elon Musk and Donald Trump teaming up uh, with Starlink and uh, helping out with uh, communications efforts, there's a lot of people who don't have internet access to even apply for funding relief yet. So like the newscaster has indicated, these numbers uh, are, are likely very, very low. And the demand that is about to land on FEMA's doorstep could be uh, could be massive. The administration did not divert money from FEMA's disaster relief fund, but there is a separate fund administered by FEMA that does give hundreds of million dollars to help undocumented migrants. The White House pushed back on Trump's claims in a statement saying this is false. The disaster relief fund is specifically appropriated by Congress to prepare for, respond to, recover from, and mitigate impacts of natural disasters. It is completely separate from other grant programs administered by FEMA for DHS. The Department of Homeland Security, that is. And on its website, FEMA said basically the same thing, that no money is being diverted from disaster response needs. That being said, FEMA does administer the separate Shelter and Services Program in partnership with U.S. Customs and Border Protection. That program provides financial support to non-federal entities to help non-citizen migrants. Its budget this year... $640 million. And just last month, 10TV reported the city of Columbus. $640 million allocated just to illegal migrants? Like, what in the world is going on here? But what about American citizens, guys? Received a $6.6 .6 million grant through the program to provide shelter for immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers. City officials say the grant will build upon partnerships and expand the capacity to provide shelter and material assistance for migrants and displaced residents. The city will get the money over three years. Now, Springfield, the Ohio city at the center of false claims about immigrants amplified by Trump, did not receive any grant funding through the Shelter and Services Program. This is not something that has just happened recently, and Florida's been warning about this since this administration took over. Mayorkas has come in like a virus and infected these what need to be healthy, strong, fundamental programs to ensure the stability and safety of Americans in times of disaster. So you heard they have taken the FEMA emergency food and shelter program and over time siphoned off hundreds of millions of dollars into basically making it an illegal immigrant resettlement program. And so when you see these states and cities around the nation declaring emergencies, even blue states, because of what this administration has done, encouraging more and more and more, developing programs to encourage more and more and more people to come here, there have, the government, Biden and Harris, are having to fund that on the backs of the American people. And now, right now, when Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, all of these states are hurting because of this truly natural disaster, not a Biden-Harris-made disaster, they're saying we need more money. And of course they need more money because they've been laundering it from the true intended, intended purpose of this fund that Congress set forth. Laws be damned. There's wow, guys. Like, if this doesn't piss you off, and, 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 and this, this is the thing, guys. People want to get behind Kamala Harris without understanding her policies. And we've heard this from CNN. We, we, we've actually seen the, the, the cover up coming from, uh, from the Dana Bash interview with Kamala Harris. And, but now the truth comes to light. And, and, um, I mean, like, we, we're just what? We're less, we're less than a few weeks away from the 2024 presidential elections. And these polls are not looking good for Kamala Harris. And the fact that, Alejandro Mayorkas has just come out confirming that FEMA, the funds for FEMA are running low, like FEMA is running out of money. This is not a good sign. And they're constantly attacking Donald Trump with all these negative ads left and right. It's 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 getting bad, guys. The level of desperation is at an all time high. And we've never heard Kamala Harris reach out to any American or, uh, you know, address the American people, I should say, regarding any kind of natural disasters. We didn't hear from her during Her Her Hurricane Helene in Florida, but we're now here and we didn't hear from her pretty much at all for the whole four years she's been in office as a vice president, as the VP. But suddenly out of the woodwork, you got Kamala Harris making a grand appearance 
pretending to care and pretending uh, as if Ron DeSantis ignored her call. Well, we already know Ron DeSantis is busy. Where have you been, Kamala Harris, this whole time is the question that a lot of people are now asking. So what do you guys think? Well, it comes as the Biden-Harris administration spent over a billion dollars from a FEMA program on services for migrants. Attorney General of the great state of Florida, Ashley Moody, joins me now. A.G. Moody, why does the Biden-Harris administration always seem to help American taxpayers last? Well, I'll tell you, I have spoken with local officials who have been struck, for example, by Hurricane Helene, and they um, are doing a, 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 an extraordinary job in trying to combat the misinformation. And I'm talking about sheriffs, I'm talking about mayors, I'm talking about local officials. I don't even know their party affiliation, by the way, but leaders on the ground who know that it is not in the best interest of the people living in those areas to not know their rights, not to know what they're entitled to, and to be afraid of seeking help. It is dangerous. It is, it is unconscionable, frankly, that anyone who would consider themselves a leader would mislead desperate people to the point that those desperate people would not receive the aid to which they are entitled. I want to get now to my colleague, Dana Bash. Uh, Dana, I understand that you got Vice President Harris on the phone. That's right, Brianna. Thank you so much. Uh, Vice President Harris, uh, I believe that you are now on the telephone fresh off of that briefing uh, that we all saw here on CNN. Thank you so much for, for being here. What is the most important thing that you learned that you want to amplify for Americans who are in the path of this dangerous storm right now? The briefing was very helpful on a number of fronts, but most importantly in getting the word out to folks in Florida in particular to please heed the advice and direction of your local officials because this storm is unlike anything we have seen before, and that's the point of emphasis. This is unlike anything we have seen before. We got a lot of tough, strong people in Florida who have been through a lot of hurricanes, tornadoes, but this is not like anything they've dealt with before. So if they have been told to evacuate, they must evacuate. We expect that this is going to be catastrophic and deadly. And I would emphasize that. I would also emphasize the uh, information that we received, that even if the, the designation of the category shifts from a five to four, um, that's not actually a downgrade in terms of the danger and the dangerous potential of it. And so let's not um, have people rely to their detriment on, oh, this sounds like it's going to be less serious than we thought. Uh, they made very clear Category 5, Category 4 are almost equivalent in terms of the danger and the damage that they will create. So Kamala Harris is suddenly a meteorologist and uh, has a lot of knowledge about the strength of hurricanes and storms, natural disasters, as it relates in this particular case to Florida. But I think it's also very interesting, guys. You let me know what you think on this one. When's the last time you heard Kamala Harris come out and talk to the American people, uh, certainly not just Floridians, but talk to the American people about natural disasters? Like, when is the last time that you heard this? I don't remember hearing Kamala Harris coming out talking uh, to Floridians or any anyone in the Southeast related to Hurricane Helene. But here we have a massive category five, massive category four. I'm not really sure what the category is at this very moment, but we're talking about Hurricane Milton in Florida. And all of a sudden we got Kamala Harris coming out of the woodwork, warning us that a category four is just as powerful as, a, or just as dangerous as a category five. And I can't help but find it very, very interesting that we've never heard from Kamala Harris before, but all of a sudden she comes out and she's got this information that she wants to share with us. She suddenly cares about the American people, or is it not about Kamala Harris caring about the American people? Maybe she doesn't give a crap about the American people. Maybe Kamala Harris is looking at this as a prime opportunity to get some spotlight, to get some free publicity, to get some free uh, media coverage on the backs of the Floridians who are getting flooded out of their homes 
and being literally destroyed and and uh, in Florida, all in the name of politics. Because as we can see, with the uh, smear campaign that has been run constantly, all the negative ads against uh, Donald Trump, all of the negative publicity against Donald Trump, constantly trying to tear him down, fake news, misinformation. And so when all of that doesn't help her in the polls, CNN is constantly reporting how in spite after all of this negative campaign, uh, negative campaigning against Donald Trump from the uh, Kamala Harris Waltz uh, campaign, they're not moving forward in the polls. Kamala Harris is losing in many of the swing states. All of these preliminary polls, most of these preliminary preliminary polls are showing that Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are not moving ahead. They're not moving ahead here, guys. So this looks like a this looks like it's purely out of desperation that Kamala Harris is jumping on the news, jumping on this opportunity. Hey, let me talk to the American people. Let me get in front of the American people. Let me act like we're like we're here to help. And speaking of help. We've already heard from Joe Biden saying that Donald, this is Donald Trump's fault. Donald Trump should be out there helping the American people, which it looks like he already is, even though he's not the sitting president. But FEMA's broke. Where is FEMA? Why is FEMA out of money? I mean, like, this is amazing how we have billions of dollars, seemingly a blank checkbook for the Ukraine. We've got a blank checkbook for illegal immigrants. But yet we don't have any money for American citizens. Floridians. We've got money for uh, for Liberia. I mean, it's just amazing what we managed to find money for and what we managed not to have the money for, not to have the budget allocations for. I mean, I got to say, making a disastrous storm like Hurricane Milton into like a political issue. This this is this is just like a new level of low for the Democratic Party. I'm just really hoping that the people in Florida are safe. That's all I can say. And the simple fact that Kamala Harris is leveraging Dana Bash of CNN to get in front of the American people and, and kind of tug on the people's feelings. Because you guys know, I mean, we've seen the previous interviews between Dana Bash and Kamala Harris. Softball interviews, easy questions. Even though Kamala Harris, she still manages to to screw it up and and have all of the wrong things to say in all of these different interviews. But here we have another great example of Kamala Harris leveraging Dana Bash in the middle of a Category Four storm, just all in all in the in the sake of uh, politics and votes. I would I would urge people to really take that information away, as well as to know. There are dedicated folks on the ground from FEMA, from federal, state, and local agencies that are there to help you, to help you in terms of advice now, to help you get out, and to help with recovery and rebuilding after this um, storm and this hurricane passes. And Madam Vice President, I just want to follow up on the FEMA readiness part of this discussion. We heard the- This is where Dana Bash, CNN drops the worst news for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz's campaign. Take a listen. Uh, Administrator Deanne Criswell say earlier today that the agency is down to $11 billion in disaster relief funding because it spent about $9 billion just over the last week. Are you confident FEMA has the resources to manage what we are, never mind what we're about to see in Florida, but of course that's on top of Hurricane Helene two weeks ago? FEMA absolutely has the resources that it needs now and to deal with this hurricane as it hits and the aftermath. And, of course, we want Congress, when they come back, to do their job of making sure that they pass um, legislation to provide more aid because, again, this is really historic in terms of what we've seen. And so we do need to buff up the aid and assistance that we give FEMA, understanding that this is unusual and may be sadly the new normal. But you don't. Wow. So what we just witnessed here, what we just heard is Dana Bash essentially calling out or uh, providing a softball pitch to Kamala Harris to talk about the state, the status of the FEMA bank accounts. OK, now FEMA has yet to fully address all of this 
all of the major devastation that has been taking place in Florida and surrounding Southeast states as a result of Hurricane Helene. OK, we're in the middle of a once in 100 year hurricane storm, uh, Hurricane Milton right now. They have no idea how much it's going to cost to rebuild Florida. Hurricane like between uh, and we're looking at what, two weeks apart between these two hurricanes. FEMA's done. And so now what we're seeing now is we're seeing uh, Kamala Harris preemptively putting the responsibility of buffering, uh, uh, buffering up the uh, reserves and uh, balances, the bank account for FEMA. She's putting it on the plate on the plate of the Senate. So basically what we're looking at here is an active play of Kamala Harris dodging the question and uh, basically uh uh, delegating the blame onto someone else. By the way, if you haven't already, please take a second, hit the like button for the video if you appreciate the content and the updates. Really appreciate you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. And if you want to take it a step further, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to even buy me a coffee, that'd be cool too. There's a link in the description down below if you guys want to do that.